Brainstorming and sharing ideas is the funnest part of the creative process. We decided to skip the boring part of actually making stuff and just do the fun part. I'm your host, Tom Walma. I'm Jason Pierpoint. I'm Dan Britton. I'm Kim Cook. And this is Creativity Wasted. So I had like kind of a practical thing because I'm kind of a bar fly myself and being in all the comedy clubs and being a musician too, I've gone into a lot of places. So mine is a, an accuracy test probe. Now this could be a probe that could be either put right into your phone or it could be Bluetooth. And it's an accuracy test probe for testing beer or mixed drinks. Ooh. And there could be there could be different like uploads that you could do and updates for the a- different apps for it. Because I've gone into bars before and ordered a beer and I swear on my life, that is not what I ordered. <laughs> so I thought it'd be cool to have a probe and you could just probe it and then it would go through your phone and tell you, okay, you ordered a Bud Light, but you got a Coors Light or you got like a regular Budweiser. And then um, you could even have like updates for like dive bar cleanliness. So it'll tell you like the uh, dirt content or the bacteria content <laughs> uh, of what the glass is, at glass is or, or lipstick content. Semen content. <laughs> <laughs> lipstick, on, lipstick on on bottles and stuff before. Um, and then there's new things to test. So you could like, uh, cause I, I'm a diabetic type two diabetic. So sometimes I'll go to a fast food restaurant and then I'm not a hundred percent sure whether they gave me diet Pepsi. So you could even do that. <laughs> it's the same test bro, but you can get okay. like updates for different, uh, you, you get an app for it too. So you can get different app updates for it, depending on what it is that you want to test with a probe. So you could even go as far as do like a, like a test app, like update for like the, if you get a one night stand or something, and you could just shove it in the chick's mouth. <laughs> find, out, find out if you're taking anything else other than her home. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that would go over real well. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I would love something like that. It's actually a great idea. I actually don't drink and uh i'm hitting 15 years on friday woohoo god willing no, all <laughs> right good job because <laughs> i did drink too much for anyway i was gonna say though i went to a place and i ordered um a non-alcoholic drink and i got it and i was like you know what it seems like it and then i took a sip and it was but that would be very helpful for that so i love that idea <laughs> Well, I've been to bars before and I went down when I play music, I went down to this one bar in Lansing. I'm not going to say who it was, but we had to walk through the cooler area to get to the guy's office. And I looked down and like every single keg was, I think, cores. <laughs> so I'm like, they have a bunch of stuff on tap. I wonder why all their kegs are cores. <laughs> so that's kind of where the idea came from. <laughs> so would you use it to be like the uh, annoying customer, like, this mixed drink doesn't have quite as much of one of the ingredients. Yeah, I mean, you could do it that way. I mean, plus there's all the apps for people that rate different uh, bars and stuff too. So, I mean, I guess you wouldn't really have to confront them right then. You could just put it on the app later on and say, hey, I ordered this and got this. And then it would be how you know. Why? I probed it. And then they want to know what you probed it with. And then you got a sale. <laughs> You'd show up with that probe and they'd be like, oh, one of these dicks. <laughs> oh, oh. Another prober. Oh. Yeah. But I know they do that. Like people get really weak martinis or whatever and they complain. I just stick with beer, but I don't know. I feel like I, I've generally always gotten the beer, but I don't know. It could have been watered down. They talk about that. Yeah. You know, you pay all that money for a double. You know, you're yeah. like the alcohol content is, isn't enough for two shots in this mixed drink. <laughs> Or you order something top shelf and you get like some bottom shelf crap. <laughs> <laughs> you can go one step forward and you can like test your meats at like McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell to find out whether it's got oh, any for this horse meat in it. be terrifying. <laughs> you know, know, opportunities isn't, it's endless, you know, you could make a lot of money. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, um, if you can't, if they can't get away with watering down the drinks, the bars might get rowdier because they might not be able to water down the drinks of the people who are getting drunk. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> you get a lot of people mad, though, I think. <laughs> you know, you got a bunch of people complaining and be like, oh, you know, I'm supposed to have 15% in my drink and I only have 9.9%. <laughs> they would just be like, wait, what? <laughs> and then you just start a revolution of complaints. <laughs> so that, yeah, that might make people get... Some people get more drunk, but then like uh, one time, one of my coworker buddies, um, we went on a murder mystery dinner thing with 
as a work function. And he didn't, he ordered, I think they were Long Island iced teas. And he didn't know that they had a high alcohol content. <laughs> so he had like three or four or more of them. And we had to physically carry him <laughs> off. <laughs> Um, and we had to, they called the police on us cause he was like passed out drunk and we had to leave before the police arrived yeah. and it was a whole deal. <laughs> there's so some that, drinks, there's some drinks out there oh, that will yeah. do it to you. Long Island's for sure. <laughs> it's got like what, five or six different types of alcohol in it. <laughs> yeah. That, that happened to me in the military. I was like 18 or 19 and I was in Korea and they have this drink, it's just called jungle juice, which just tastes like fruit punch, but it's loaded oh. with alcohol. And I drank like three of these big, you know, I don't know, half liters and like just stood up and my friends caught me, you know, it was just <laughs> instantaneous, but the probe would have helped. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, I guess, some, I guess you could do test strips too. Like if you found some chemical company that was able to make like you little just, swimming pool test yeah. strips for you, so you don't have Show to like with be so obvious. Dish and, yeah, <laughs> that way you don't have to ask for the Wi-Fi password first before you test their <laughs> drinks. <laughs> yeah, I need your Wi-Fi. Well, for what? <laughs> well. Did you have a name for it? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know the the Accur Drunk. <laughs> <Something> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I wonder if, because if, if you knew the exact alcohol content of what you're drinking, it could learn, like, how drunk are you going to get if you drink this drink? Oh, yeah. So yeah. it could, like, help you out that way. Like, I have to leave at in two hours, yeah. and I want to be legal to drive. This is, like, exactly the amount that I can drink. But yeah, <laughs> the, app, the app you could put in your your height, weight, and age, and then what you ate that day. And it could like pinpoint it within 15 minutes or whatever, you know, yeah. you need to get, get on the road. Well, I guess if you could stuff it in your date's mouth, you could stuff it in your own mouth and be able to find out how drunk you are. Everybody wins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She'd be like, are you taking your temperature? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> I wonder if this is even, I know it's sort of a silly idea. You're, you're not really thinking about if it's possible, but like for the alcohol content, it seems like it might be actually possible. Yeah, I like, think there's technology for some interesting stuff. I couldn't imagine that they couldn't come up with something like that. Yeah, we there was uh, a couple of months ago, a friend of mine busted out one of those alcohol testers he blow into at a party. And I was like, I was, I'd be afraid wondered. of why they don't have those at bars like because you're always wondering sometimes you have a few drinks and you're like should i be driving like what would i blow <laughs> it's, i almost feel like they don't have them available because they want you they want to catch you drunk driving i don't know it's like it should be available yeah we're probably a liability for the bar <laughs> when yeah. the police come looking later on to find out why the person crashed on the way home from their bar <laughs> right. yeah <laughs> No, I, I don't know. Would, yeah. would people go to that bar though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're babysitting I think a people, little too much. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to let you leave. They're going to take your keys. It's just going to be a whole hassle. Um, yeah. Maybe you'd rather drive a little drunk. <laughs> maybe that's a little too big brotherish. <laughs> um, yeah. They always talk, not always, but every once in a while it comes up oh, they're going to force people to put breathalyzers in cars. I thought I saw something recently on the news about some, maybe it was a, a state law somewhere that they were actually going to finally pass that law, but I'm oh. not sure anybody like, hear anything about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were talking about just putting that in like manufactured cars, like coming off the lot. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Wow. Or maybe it was like <laughs> once you've been convicted or something, you just have to have them permanently oh. or something. Right. Yeah, that that car, I think it doesn't let you start the car. Like if you yeah, had a few DWIs, like hmm. you, and that's yeah. why some people would get, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> spouse or someone else to blow in it. But anyway. I actually I think don't have a, practice with this, but <laughs> I think that's a thing though. I, I think they do do that. I think the courts can put like breathalyzers in your yeah. car so you have to blow into mm -hmm. it. But I don't know. Uh, right off the manufacturer floor, that'd be that'd be, <laughs> the uh, new that'd be a bad selling point. <laughs> yeah. 
I think you've got to blow into those every 15 minutes or something. I think wow. somebody told me, like, as you're driving, sometimes you've got to blow into them. It's distracting. I could be wrong about wow. that. Um, Maybe somebody ought to do something about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. An invention for that. That sucks. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, there's another ago. another app for the phone. You plug it in, you can plug it in your breathalyzer, and it'll pass your breathalyzer free so you can start your car. <laughs> Any shows you want to plug? Tomorrow night I'll be at Beggar's Banquet for the Beggar's Can't Be Choosers. On June 17th, Comedy at the Creek's coming back. I do get to do Final Gravity, too, so that's on the 24th. Uh, I'm at the Rubber City Comedy Festival uh, at the end of the week. It's in Akron, Ohio, May 25th to the 27th. I'm featuring at uh, the Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. Oh, nice. And then uh, the next week, I think June 1st through the 3rd, I'm at One Night Stands. I'm hosting at One Night Stands May 11th through 13th. The headliner is Norm Stoltz. This has been a production of Planet Amp Podcast, powered by Pinecast.